you say that Congress might be true, that Republicans are trying to win elections by passing these voting bills? Uh, I think it's a fair question. It's a fair uh, idea to me that it's an accusation. But if, if someone accused that, then uh, I, I think that's a fair thing to say. But really, what my, my, my point was is the, the narrative. And, and remember that most of the time, public uh, folks in the public listen to buzzwords and phrases, and if it's repeated all enough, there, I, and it really has nothing to do with, I shouldn't say nothing, but mostly not to do with the substance of these bills. I mean, the Democrat suggestions, and some of, many of which have been taken for these bills, and some haven't. Uh, my, my reference really was about the use of the phrase voter suppression. Um, and that's, that's apparently a national narrative, and the folks, they're, they're talking, uh, they're folks who do their talking points in the media, Chris Matthews, folks like that are going to repeat that over and over until November 2016. This isn't just about what happens in Ohio. Uh, this is, of course, in 2016 and beyond. So the phrase voter suppression is, is their talking point. Um, the, the problem that we have is we're trying to govern. And you can't have multiple amendments and multiple bills and talk about all uh, modernizing election violence, improving accountability, minor party protection, all of those, that's not a good talking point. Working hard and trying to make it fair and having lots of testimony from lots of people, that's, that's not as interesting. So it, it's really about that and then uh, sort of the less overt accusations of racism or, or things like that. Um, that's how people get what they want a lot of times. And, and, and you know, I, I might, and the point is, I'm not offended by that when some representative on the other side says, because I know what they're doing. Much like I'm not offended with another lawyer in the courtroom if he says to the jury, Mr. Hoffman doesn't know what he's talking about. He's doing his job. I just want everybody to understand what's going on here. And that, that's really what my point is. Which I think most people do know what's going on, but it needs to be said. Do you think that the sum total of passing all these bills will help Republicans win elections? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that when you look at um, most of these reforms, these are things that, again, some of them are modernization, some of these are things that are correcting what I think are obvious abuses in the past. I think Republicans overemphasize the problems that some of these things create, which doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, repair them. For example, Golden Week. Now, a lot of Republicans say, well, that's bad for us. We should, we should fix that. Well, we should fix it, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. We should fix it because it was a lapse in the law. The people who put this together made very poor judgment. And it's not fair to the people who go down there, register to vote, do it the right way. Uh, everybody in the public, but some group of people get to walk in and say, well, I'm just going to register to vote that day. Well, how do we know for sure they live in Precinct 4D voting on that central committee member for that city council. It's not just about the governor's race. There are multiple local races where two or three or five votes make a difference. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that uh, we do tend to overemphasize. Our, our electoral problems are more about uh, not being proactive in getting our voters out and not getting our messages across the that these are reforms that are needed in elections, uh, regardless of how it affects the outcome. It might be. My early voting bill does not spell out what days in that 29 day period must the boards of elections must be open. The Secretary of State asked for that, mm -hmm. uh, that be spelled out. Why, why did you decide to leave it up to him to do via directive rather than spell it out in the bill? I will defer to the chairman. It's a good question, and it's just not something that has been right in terms of our discussion at this point. Uh, again, as you can see, we've, we've done a lot of work in this area this year, this session, and uh, we'll leave that to the Secretary to determine. Senator Beakey. Uh, yes, I'm Jim Beakey, and uh, I've, I've been listening in throughout the whole process about the interest in these pieces of legislation. I first voted in 1961, which is longer than most of you are old. And uh, to vote absentee, I had to physically go to the Board of Elections and fill out a form. And depending on who was 
working with me, I might end up having a blood to, to be able to vote at you. And then the election was Tuesday, same Tuesday as it is now. And that was it. You either voted in person, you had to have a legitimate reason to be absent, to be allowed to vote absentee. And there was probably a higher percentage of registered voters that voted then than do today. And in that 50 plus year time frame, the laws have been written so that we have done everything possible to accommodate voters who, to participate in the single most important act there is that goes on in the state house, the right to vote. And what these laws are doing is to ensure the integrity of the finest system that we can have. And that's it. We want to make the laws so that they're honest, efficient, and keep the integrity of the process intact. And it's incumbent upon all of us who are in elective office to behave in a manner that will want people to come in droves every time there's an election. So I just wanted to add a historical perspective to the subject of time.